Yo, what up guys? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Sarth, and today we're going to discuss one of the hottest topics in all of World of Warcraft history for rogues, outside of the current hot topic of the Dark Mantle, and that's going to be, should you rather go swords or daggers? What's really better, swords or daggers? And so today we're going to break down some of the pros and cons of both of the playstyles, whether it be swords or daggers. And also at the end of the video, I'll be taking some opinions from some of the top rogues in the entire world. One is GD, who is the very top sword rogue currently on Warcraft logs in the entire world. And the only people that have beaten him are dagger rogues. And we will get into why that is kind of a thing. And we've also got our boy Aeromit with us. We're going to break a lot of things down after this and if you want to see an extended version of our talk with these rogues and even more i will be posting it on the patreon channel which is a brand new patreon channel that we just started as well as in the sub only channel on our discord so feel free to join that if you like this content of course please like and subscribe and let's dive right in Okay, so first things first, I personally play daggers and I also do have Thunder Fury, the best sword in the entire game for humans in the offhand and also the best sword currently in the game for everyone else in the offhand. But it is also the best offhand for daggers in the game currently if you don't have rank 14 and I do still play as a dagger rogue. Now why is that? And that is specifically, purely, because I do not have another sword. So don't let that be a sway before we get into the video of should you be swords or daggers. I personally am daggers because that's what dropped for me. And that's kind of one of the biggest things that's initially going to be affecting your choice between swords or daggers. So in my guild, we did the server first run of Ragnaros on the horde side of my server and Perdition's Blade actually dropped then. I lost the roll on it, so I was kind of still open for interpretation, and at that time, I was using swords, because you're going to level as swords either way. But the next week, I got Core Houndtooth and Fell Striker, which moved to me basically being a dagger rogue. Even though in phase one, I wanted to be swords, I was pretty much stuck being a dagger rogue, and as you have two epic weapons, you can't be prioritized any other weapons if you're in a loot council system. But if you're in a DKP system, you could save up for any of the weapons you want. The hard thing here, though, is that weapon drops are rare, almost extremely rare, to be honest. And as you go through World of Warcraft Classic, you're probably seeing this a lot in your own guilds right now, but you do go through a lot of attrition, where people end up quitting the game after getting some of the best items in the game. It's almost a meme in my guild where if you get CTS as a rogue, you have to quit the game, which means we have to recruit new rogues so it's always kind of a yin and yang between loot because there's always new people entering your raid that need weapons. So that plays a huge factor into what you'll be going swords versus daggers. So now let's go to the pros versus cons within each respective spec. As for daggers, the biggest advantage you really have is burst and a reliance on RNG. Now with shorter kill times and a higher uptime of both Adrenaline Rush, the use of Renataki's Charm of Trickery, and your Thistle T, you get an incredible amount of burst out of daggers, especially if you have backstab crits, higher than you can possibly reach with swords because you can't in that amount of time utilize the amount of energy you're getting and the extra energy used on a backstab over a Sinister Strike will give you a larger on average DPS increase per energy than it will for Sinister Strike. Now, the reasoning here really is the utilization of energy. In a shorter fight, Dagger Rogues can absolutely excel. And that is kind of something that's crucial to most parse runs, where the fights are shorter and more of the percentage of the time that you're fighting the actual boss or the actual encounter, the uptime of your cooldowns, which is the amount of time you're using Adrenaline Rush, Blade Flurry, how short the fight is actually also directly relates to the impact of Thistle T and Renatakis as well during this spec. So more energy comes out to more damage output, especially as daggers. And that's why you all have to go daggers for Veil, because you have infinite energy and you're going to use that energy better as dagger spec or using backstabs than you could possibly have using swords. Now, this is the main draw to daggers, the burst and utilization 
of energy and cooldowns. But what about longer fights? And what about what's in the game right now? Swords has the advantage of being more consistent overall, especially on longer fights than daggers. And there's also better swords in the game unless you have rank 14 weapons. Now, the strongest current disadvantage to playing daggers is that your Biss daggers came out in phase one. So you've literally been using the same weapons the entirety of this game, and you haven't actually seen a real upgrade. Now, Dragonfang Blade can be useful if you have Kings and ZG buff, but that's besides the point. You're not seeing a real upgrade, and as a sword rogue, you've seen a massive upgrade with CTS and Maladath, especially if you're not human. And if you're a human, you've seen a huge upgrade to your offhand with the Warblade of the Hikari. As a dagger rogue, we haven't really had that. Although there is one major exception. With the rank 14 weapons, daggers are ridiculously powerful. Those are a massive upgrade from the weapons we're using right now. So those are the huge upgrade and that's kind of the advantage if you do have those you are significantly stronger than any other dagger rogues that are competing with you the other major disadvantage to daggers is uptime now this is the hardest part and this is really the reason that daggers weren't the most amazing in molten core moving forward daggers might not be the most amazing as well now what do i mean by that and that is absolutely getting the most optimal uptime on all of your abilities, as well as cleave. If you played a dagger rogue or you play dagger rogue right now, you do know that, especially in molten core, if you're doing a speed run or even just a normal run, a lot of times you have a lot of struggle cleaving. You can use blade flurry batching with spell batching to move in and out between two mobs where you're backstabbing one and slightly batch to get your blade flurry to hit the other one but that's not the most reliable thing. And it also takes a lot more effort than just positioning yourself in between the two mobs and using Sinister Strike and hitting both of them. If your tanks were to perfectly align all of the mobs right on top of each other, then you would have insane cleave and you could just pump out some gnarly DPS, but that's a really rare occasion, even in some of the top guilds. Blade Flurry has a very small range on its actual cleave and that's a reason why moving forward, it's going to be pretty frustrating being daggers as well. AQ is a huge raid. You're going to be fighting trash packs with five or more mobs. And unless they're stacked up perfectly, you're not actually getting your cleave off of Blade Flurry. Or you might have to stand in between two mobs and Sinister Strike. Outside of Blade Flurry being very frustrating as daggers, the next real thing is the uptime of your actual abilities. So sometimes it's hard to get behind a mob to even backstab. And this is something that's gonna be frustrating with Cthune because Cthune can just change the way he's facing all the time and you might lose out on uptime of just backstabbing. A big part of being a rogue, especially on Horde side, is that you wait for your weapon swing to use an ability so you don't reset your weapon swing with Wind Fury, Hodge, Sword Specialization, something like that. Now, as Alliance, you don't really have to worry about this as much, a big thing that warriors happen to do if they have BRE on cleave fights and during trash packs is put BRE on and use a two-hander during these because it's actually more effective during cleaves. And that's also something that dagger rogues should be doing as well. Aramid actually brought this up that I actually didn't even think about before, but on his sinister strike and his backstabs, he does have a macro on there to equip his sword when he's using sinister strike and equip his dagger when he's using backstab. So those are the biggest downsides of being daggers. Now, next phase, we finally do get really insane daggers with Death Sting and Blessed Karaji Pugio, but we're also going to see a massive amount of increase in trash mobs that we need to cleave down. So be ready if you're going to be staying daggers to start equipping a different weapon when you're cleaving these mobs down. But if you're Alliance, you almost always see every rogue being sword rogues. And almost all the time when you're seeing a lot of high damage in a speed run or something like that, you're seeing all of the rogues, almost all of the rogues being swords. Now why is that? Swords have the great advantage of doing two different things. One, it is a lot easier to get your abilities off and have a better uptime, which is again things like Blade Flurry, and you can use 
your energy really well when you're not using all of your cooldowns. You're not dependent on your energy gaining CDs to do more DPS. Although they do help, they do not help as much as they do for daggers on those short fights. So if your fights are a little bit longer or you're moving through at a quicker pace, swords will almost always outperform. Actually, if you look at all of the phases objectively using the Sims Garcia spreadsheet, then you'll see that swords other than next phase in phase five will outperform in every situation technically. Now, this is based off of not having rank 14 weapons. The rank 14 daggers, again, are absolutely insane. And if you look at any of the top parses in the world, every single one of them, except for GD, who we're going to talk to later in this video, is a dagger rogue using rank 14 weapons. So in all of the phases, swords will outperform daggers, except for next phase with death sting as the exception, you need this weapon so that daggers will actually outperform swords in an optimal situation, and that's even on a longer fight. Where swords really shines are places like speed runs, as well as times when there's a lot of cleave or longer fights. Overall, throughout the raid, swords will do a lot of damage and you'll have a lot more uptime on your abilities because you're not worried about positioning behind a mob. You can just get in between the mob and the next one to blade flurry. You will consistently see extremely high DPS out of swords, so in most situations, swords will actually be the better play. Currently, the raid that we deal with most is Blackwing Lair, which has most encounters pretty much being single target or being taunted or tanked very, very close together, so cleaving is pretty easy to do as daggers, or if it's just one initial boss, if you're trying to parse, just fighting a short fight as daggers can be incredible. Now in next phase, again, you will see a massive resurgence of a lot of mobs, a lot of trash mobs being pulled or trying to cleave. And you're gonna see a lot more frustration where mobs are changing the way that they're facing, other people are pulling aggro, and you're gonna see swords kind of outshine during most of the trash pulls throughout AQ, at least early on. But in a parse run, if you are killing bosses very fast and you have higher uptime of your abilities like Adrenaline Rush or Blade Flurry or Renatakis and Thistle T, you are going to see more DPS output out of daggers. Now, swords versus daggers. Is there a conclusive reason to go one or the other? It depends on what your guild does, how fast your guild kills bosses, and also how you deal with personal frustrations, not being able to backstab a mob or losing out on a lot of uptime on cleave if the mobs or bosses are spread out more than you'd like them to be. With the exception of one dagger next phase, swords will technically outperform for the most part. GD actually uses this dagger spec that I'm showing you here on screen just because his Razor Gore fights are so short that he needs to backstab because you can't utilize the energy gain you have from Adrenaline Rush, Renatakis, and Thistle T as swords on such a short fight. But it all comes down to personal preference and what you can get in your guild. You don't have to pigeonhole yourself into the thinking of, I need to be swords or I need to be daggers. You can utilize both and perform extremely well as both. And that's kind of where I'm going to leave you guys off. Let me know what you think. What do you prefer? What did I miss? Any of the pros or cons for either of the specs, sword spec or dagger spec? Just let me know what you think in the comments and if there's something else I should touch on. I guess there's one thing I did forget to mention, but if you are the improved exposed armor rogue, you absolutely do not want to be using backstab, even if you're the seal of fate spec, because you're trying to utilize energy as best as you can to get exposed armor up as fast as you can. So right now I'm going to go to a clip from my stream where I brought in Aeromint and GD and again these guys are some of the biggest pumpers in the world with GD having the highest actual Sword Rogue overall boss damage in the entire raid. He was number two under Just Woo, but now he's been beaten by a couple people, but he's the highest still as a Sword Rogue. So we're going to get their opinions on swords versus daggers. I do want to preface this with the fact that this was the first time I had somebody on stream where we were talking to, so I did actually realize watching back that I can't really be replying or talking to the stream as I would usually be doing while having these conversations. Sometimes a little bit I will talk over people and it is extremely rude, but also just 
not really great for the content as well. So this was a learning experience here and we will be doing a lot more talks on stream with a lot of people moving forward. Thoughts, swords Hell versus yeah. daggers. Hit me with it. I got the answer right here for you. <laughs> okay. Uh, all the top rogues are daggers for parsing. Boom. If you go check. And, you know, they all have DFT, and about half of them have uh, GM weapon. And the, for the That's GM okay. daggers, they're, like, pretty important. I think they're better than the GM swords. Like, as far as, like, dagger spec is better, and also the weapons are just fucking better for daggers. Blackwing Lair favors daggers. Yeah, I mean... Of how good all the different weapons are. Which you showed us your spec earlier before we were on stream, but... Mm -hmm. Should be right there. Yeah, I have it right here. You use daggers as a sword rogue on, not only on Veil, but also on Broodlord because of the length yeah, of my, effect. Yeah, my best kill that put me in top 10 was the uh, Veil only, but I switched to using daggers on Razor Gore also because it's such a short Razor fight. Razor Gore. And you really have to dump your energy per global. Like, you're not doing a lot of waiting. If, you, if you're Sinister Strike, Sinister Strike, you're just like fucking under too much stress to, with AR and T and Renataki. It's all up at the same time. And um, Next I understand phase... the... the trouble that you go through with uh blade flurry is daggers but it's really i think daggers is just better overall for blackwing lair i don't think that that's a big enough reason to switch to swords just to make it easier for blade flurry and speed runs i think daggers is better that's all there is to it but you have to have gm weapons so arrow what do you think about daggers and swords again i, I all of uh molten core and first few weeks of blackwing lair i did play as a sword rogue I wasn't as geared as I as I am now. However, if you look at um, Arrow, that one week, like I said earlier, I got super lucky, got the daggers, got the gloves, all in one week, and went dagger. And that first week was the first week ever where I my butt I had to quit my quench my butt cheeks, man. I was like, I'm gonna pull aggro and I'm gonna die. And I'm gonna lose all the world buffs I spent three hours, you know, to get I was just scared for my life, dude. And then instantly saw like multiple hundred dps increase overall on every single fight you know so i don't know um how or why but at that point i became like an advocate for dagger rogues like in the guild and i was like because everybody was like oh you gotta go swords you gotta go swords and i'm like dude watch me go daggers i'm gonna kick your butt <laughs> i really really enjoyed the burst that it provides right now and the fact that in a speed run scenario and or a parsing run scenario Crit, fights are crit, so short crit. like you mentioned daggers oh, yeah. uh Jesus. have that chance to just blow everything out of the water because you you get your crits Jesus. and you're fully robust like my la on my last run i was sitting at like 53 percent crit plus the talents that's like 83 percent crit on backstab you know my backstabs are going to crit for the most part the focus is really your positioning. You can pop Blade Flurry, but if you're not staying yeah, in the right spot, you're not doing site. anything. It's still going to hit one mob. Come on, so, Internet. Uh, I'd say the focus is more you guys your can positioning still see me again, right? Like My Internet has been so uh, weird lately. If you get fights below 30 seconds, it becomes too stressful to play consistently with swords because of AR, Renatakis, and... Uh, it only dies when it's raid night. It's yeah. too hard to blow that Every time, dude. Like, it, it's not hard to do. You could do it. You could do it perfectly. But Let me close it, this, too. It fucks everything up. And so, daggers is the way to go. Oops, I try not to swear. If you like this content, guys, make sure to like and subscribe. Feel free to join me in the Discord, or we do have the new Patreon that we just set up. If you want to see the entire interview or the entire conversation I had with all of these top rogues, thank you again to GD and Aeromit and the other rogues that are here for coming into the channel and talking with us on stream. If you want to see me do more things like this or break anything else down, do come hang out with me on stream, Twitch TV slash Sarth, every Monday, Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday. 7 p.m. PST. And lastly, if you have any questions or you want me to cover anything else, I'll be doing a guide specifically on how to get Earth Strike as fast as you can in next phase. Of course, again, like and subscribe. Good luck out there, guys, and I'll catch you all on the next one.